This is going to be a talk between myself and Benedict. Um, just talk about some notation ideas because now we have a, a surface that um, uh, if you want to notate performances, we're dealing with um, a, a Z direction that you would assume you can handle with if you're doing conventional notation with um, dynamic markings. Um, and an X direction, which you could use conventional note head notation, but we have more uh, uh, fine uh, uh, pitch control within the continuum. So it may be that um, your particular piece requires um, some sort of notational process to go in between the lines, so to speak. But there's a third dimension added, which is really not um, specifically addressed in conventional notation with the Y direction. And um, and there's different ways to uh, notate that for sure. Um, and I think it really depends on the intended uh, use in the piece and how specific the composer wants to be in, in specifying, z specifying instructions. Um, I'll just go over two pieces before Benedict uh, starts because mine are quite brief. I just wanted to show these. Uh, these are both pieces I'll play tonight. Um, this one is a, uh, it's an instrument that uh, I developed for the continuum the preset and it uses a, a touche area. So if I show this here, so, and I've actually specified a touche area in my right hand. Conventionally, when you start up and bring the touche, it goes to the very lowest part of a half size continuum, but I put it up here. And so it's not gonna really play notes, but the center of this touche is this uh, E natural, right, in the center. So what I tended to do in the score, because I wasn't really concerned specifically with notating um, uh, the, the Y direction in this piece, because I wanted to keep that feeling kind of loose, even though Y does something different in the touche, I just notated it conventionally as um, with note heads knowing very well that it's, you know, these aren't actually going to make notes. So if you play, let me just play, I'll show you. I knew that I wanted to keep this piece pretty loose. There's actually more improvisation in it than, in the, than this structure would show. But I just kept that right hand um, uh, notating as, as E naturals, knowing that, uh, well, those are going to be touche notes. And, and then also uh, using the piano notation and using the cross beaming because it was either right hand or left hand. The other piece I have here is um, this piece called Aspen Clone. And here it's kind of, it's more important that um, uh, I have notation that specifies where I am in the Y directions somewhat. So I'm using up triangles to say Y is, you know, to, towards the back and di down triangles to say, well, you should be closer to the front and then squares um, to uh, show that a note is in the middle. And so it does make differences in this sound. Um, that when you play <laughs> with wipe is one, it's diffuse and it gets more focused as you go towards white or zero. This piece actually has a lot of very particular pedal movements that I've just memorized, and I just gave up on trying to figure out the, ex you know, at one point I, I was thinking of specifying a pedal on its own stave, but uh, it makes a real big difference when you play chords with that Y direction.
And I'm using a lot of half pedal te techniques to sustain sounds, but then fade them out. So that's an example of some things rather more specific and other things left up to my discretion because that's the way I like it. So that, that's my uh, notation today. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, I don't have, a, uh, let's say, a presets loaded or, or example sheet music, so I, I thought I was just uh, going to use the whiteboard for a while. And uh, my uh, introduction also won't be uh, very long, so I guess we can have then free discussion when that's done. So uh, uh, it's said that one, one time doesn't make a tradition and uh, two times uh, kind of starts making something that could be a tradition. So uh, I, I've uh, not been doing much notation of pieces. Uh, just a handful at most, and I should do more. So for this performance, I thought, okay, I won't rely on my memory. So I said yesterday that it was 95% sound design and 5% and rehearsal. So uh, I, I decided I have to write sheet music for myself. And uh, so then there were some, some things that I didn't do in, in Asheville that I thought, okay, how to solve these. And I gave up already long ago on using not notation software for these things because I found that uh, they are, even Finale is, is uh, very flexible, but you can't make your own symbols really. And uh, then also if you want to do, uh, I usually, uh, for some reason, I prefer to use kind of more improvisation uh, sheet music, so I don't even notate the, the time values, I, it's just note heads to give me the pitches and then, then uh, the rhythmical aspects are totally free or at least improvised. So, and it's also a way of sa saving space because those stems uh, use up a lot of uh, real estate on the paper. So, okay, I thought uh, I, will, I will just write everything uh, by hand and not use any notation software. Then I can use any kind of, of symbols I like. And, uh, so uh, obviously one, one way of saving space is to use just note heads, uh, which is similar to, to what Ed has done here. Uh, and then we come to this uh, Y direction. So it's uh, perfectly right what Ed said, that, that uh, it's of course less uh, accurate than, than uh, the other directions. So you could live with just uh, three symbols. But uh, uh, for, for this particular piece, I started using uh, kind of shorthand notation for that uh, uh, is very well suited to, to the y direction but you can also notate the, the z or c direction there if you want and those who have uh, studied the uh, facebook discussion are already familiar with this but i will draw it on the whiteboard so i was thinking uh, sometime last year okay how could this be abbreviated so uh, in a in a logical way so if you think of the letter y you could stylize it like this, and uh, Z or C uh, is actually could be like that. Okay, what if you combine them? Then uh, you would have this kind of thing, but that's uh, still too complex. So you could have just uh, this thing. This would tell you that the upper part is Y, the lower part is Z. Or you could just leave this line out altogether because this will already define everything. Just two lines. And uh, this is now Y and this is Z or Z. So uh, now you can do whatever you like uh, along this line because this defines zero and one. Uh, so slowly rising uh, Y would be, of course, a line going up like this. And vice versa, if you want to have, let's say, if you want to, to have uh, ad lib y, but you want to specify just the range, that you should stay somewhere close to the middle, then what you could do is perhaps something like this. And then you would it would be filled, because then it means everything between those. Uh, if uh, instead you, you need to alternate between just two specific values, like 
uh, uh, 1 and 0, then it could be, for example, this kind of symbol. So either 0 or 1. Uh, and um, of course, if you, have, uh, if you want to have some kind of quick variation in y, nothing prevents you from doing, for example, this kind of thing. Uh, and um, then you could even have, uh, if you have, uh, if you start from full y range and then you, you gradually converge to a certain point, you could have, for example, uh, if, uh, if this would be you know, notating starting at any value of y and converging at uh, halfway uh, uh, 0.5, then it could be this kind of thing. And uh, so how about then the uh, sort of dynamic uh, parameter Z or C? Well, uh, you could think about this as, uh, some, now this is kind of uh, uh, intuitive because uh, when you don't press the surface, then uh, it's the highest possible position. Pressing it means pressing it down. So uh, you could have then uh, whatever, if you want to make a tremolo, for example, it could be something like that. And if you want to make a tremolo at increasing y value, it could be that kind of thing. So this would be, I don't know how this preset will react, but... Okay, you, you didn't hear it there, but you, maybe you saw it. Uh, so this doesn't use up very much space. Of course, this, this is not standard notation, this uh, uh, how you normally do with, with uh, uh, dynamics. So you could also imagine uh, that this could be, if you have a, a, just a, a traditional crescendo, then uh, what you could do, whatever happens here is of less importance now. But you could imagine that uh, what a crescendo would look like is more like starting somewhere and then going down. And this is a little bit like the lower half of a traditional uh, musical notation for crescendo. So if you think about it in, in, in that way, then... Uh, uh, this one, well, uh, this is a little bit of a danger because uh, here you can think about something, uh, something uh, going down. So it, it's easy to misinterpret this as, as kind of getting softer. But uh, the, way you, uh, the, way, the way I try to think in this case is that this is actually the lower half of, of a crescendo. Because uh, this means nothing and this means maximum or at least more. And uh, the standard musical notation for starting from silence uh, is this kind of thing. So if you, if you do that with this kind of notation, then it would just mean that your line is, is starting from the origin, okay. like that. So the horizontal line is the zero point, and z goes down to increase, and y goes up to increase. Yes, so this is zero for, for both regions. Okay. So this is, when, uh, this is when you don't touch the, su the surface at all, and then this defines also the, the length of one, so uh, you don't have to draw another line here. You could if you want, but this is also, if this is one, then this is also one. So this would mean pressing it fully down. And uh, of course you could still combine it with traditional notation. So if you don't need any information about why, then uh, of course, you could use just traditional notation. Uh, and um, if you don't need these kinds of things, you only want to, no to notate why, then we will would go back to, to this kind of thing. So uh, those are some, some ideas that I've just now used for the first time, but I thought I would share them if, if they are interesting. Uh, and. Uh, then this would mean that there are a lot of these kinds of symbols uh, on uh, close to the note heads. Uh, but uh, I would also like to mention another thing, which is, which is related to doing, doing uh, glissandi. So 
uh, in traditional notation what you do would be just to have uh, let's say node heads and then one way is to, to do this kind of wiggly line but that also uses a lot of space so and especially if you also uh, add gliss which is sometimes done now uh, you have to use quite much space so I thought okay uh, how about using just just simple lines this would be uh, I don't have any lines here now but let's say that we would have some so this would be just um, in this case uh, for example okay not so very good this kind of thing uh, because having having just a line uh, is the kind of least space demanding way of notating it uh, of course uh, one reason uh, let's say if, if one more traditional way to do it would be to have maybe some kind of arc but then if you have an arc I've been thinking that this would be a good way to notate also a, a kind of quick glissando so if you have this kind of thing uh, what you do uh, in in kind of on the pl playing surface is more like going up a bit above and then down again so I thought okay I would prefer to use these arcs more for for notating actual pitches because then this way you could you could do a very quick uh, let's say space efficient if this is a note head and if you want to do this kind of thing for example in principle you could or maybe this is not a good example let's have let's have this kind of thing so it's a bit hard to draw uh, well here but uh, this way you could notate for example this kind of thing just going up and down again and you don't necessarily need a note head for this so if you use the line just for that then uh, it saves a lot of space compared to actually writing out that uh, higher pitch as well uh, but this means of course that you are kind of redefining some some symbols used in traditional notation so then then uh, one challenge is to remember that they mean now something new but that's always the case with these kinds of experiments you know one thing I like about that gliss is you can notate in time where the gliss is yeah. predominantly mm. happening because sometimes you want to hold and then just gliss at the very end so you could do a scoop mm. sort of uh, notation yeah th that's usually uh, that, that can be sometimes hard to interpret in standard notation of course uh, sometimes what is done is to just just notate uh, let's say a tie yeah, yeah you, you have you have kind of uh, the time values explicitly shown and then then you have uh, let's say the final glissando is then a different note and okay now it's too too close but normally you would have a wiggly line between these mm -hmm. so then you could have for example if this would be uh, okay you could have half note here and a quarter here and then a final quarter here then that would give you some idea about that uh, glissando coming only at the end yes yeah but that, that too yeah, uses more space than just having a line and also it's in a lot of ways too specific because sometimes a gesture like that is really more of a feel thing at the end mm. and, and so if you really what you're really trying to say is oh just within that last little bit um, you know within that last 30 second note I want this little scoop mm. that that ends up being very messy in conventional notation when you're just trying to do a, a simple little uh, uh, gesture and then maybe one one final thing I thought about mentioning is that okay how about then some some sharp attacks uh, in conventional notation you could use this uh, 
this kind of okay where's uh, space left here so uh, just dra dra drawing a general note head here and then you could have this kind of I don't remember what it's called that's one way of doing it but uh, in in this kind of system what you could do is basically just you could even go as far as just having one line down and if not one line down then maybe something like something like that perhaps so that would be very sharp I don't know if this is the right preset to demonstrate it that kind of thing or then if you have a sharp attack and then the note goes on so it could be yeah, then <laughs> yeah okay it's, it's, but you you get the idea anyway uh okay let's see is there anything else yeah okay may maybe one so so if uh, uh if you want a really soft attack on something then uh, what that would look like is more like uh, if you just uh, do, if you don't notate anything on the on the Y side, it could be, for example, like this. So it's uh, you aren't uh, holding it down, you aren't doing this sharp attack, but you are kind of stroking it like that. And of course, if you want to combine that with a sweep of Y from zero to from one to zero, it would be like that. So this would be this kind of gesture. And of course, there's no. Uh, you could, uh, if you have some time axis here, you could have some duration also, but uh, it gets messy if it's too long. So I don't know. Maybe what you could do is have the symbol and then this kind of line saying where it applies so you don't have to make it too wide well it's i find it's always a danger for the notation to be too precise mm. it's always nice to leave something to the performance yeah uh, uh, at least as long as you so uh, if you do it for yourself and if you if you uh, need to remember some specific details then they might it, it might need to be quite specific uh, if you can remember everything then of course you you need almost nothing and uh, or, or or almost nothing plus a video recording of yourself <laughs> playing so remember what you did actually what one thing that would be very useful uh, for remembering what you do uh, if you just record your fingers from above then you don't see this uh, depth dimension but if, if you combine that with uh, a video of, of the editor showing uh, the oh, movements on Yes, that, that, that would be very, very efficient. Oh, and, and then you mentioned the pedal. So uh, in, in this one, I, I was using ped one and ped two uh, because there are two of them, but otherwise, uh, same idea. I, I tend to use that conventional pedal notation because I have one as a, s a sustain and the other as continuous. Okay. What about uh, tremolos? Uh, sorry, what do you mean? Tremolo, uh, vibrato. Uh. Yeah, okay. Well, 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 if it's a tremolo and it's just the same same pitch, then it would be something like that. Yeah. So, uh, and and if if you have a, a, a vibrato, then it could be. Uh, well, if you if you just use this kind of line notation. And you start with a quarter note doing some tremolo and going over into a, a half, then uh, it could be. But this is, of course, also standard musical notation, so then you would have to be careful that you don't uh, misinterpret this one. I would think that a vibrato would use, just use standard indicators mm. for that, unless it's something unusual. But just be mm -hmm. on B, period. Yeah. I agree. I think as much that can be stand as much that is standard that can use the standard notation yes. makes musicians hate you less. 
Yes. <laughs> and uh, also, one, uh, at least for this one, I, I found out that I, I like to use whatever approach uses less space. So, so if there was a, like normal crescendos, I used uh, standard notation. So it's it's always uh, as long as everybody understand what something uh, understands what something means, then it's fine. And uh, uh, if somebody has to learn something new, it's always just for for one piece. It's always uh, less good than using what's already standard. So whatever works, I would say. And this is, uh, I'm not trying to impose anything here, it's just uh, something I used here. And if you find some ideas here worth using yourselves, then, then uh, be my guest. <coughs> so that's basically, uh, I think uh, these are all the things I, I could think of at this moment. So do we have any more questions uh, from people? Okay, well, uh, thank you, Benedict. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you too.